Hey good people, it is Tashara from Politics and Fashion here today with a video that is all about my winter favorites. Now, I have never produced this kind of video before, so I hope y'all love it. I really enjoyed putting this list together because as a girl from Florida, it is no surprise that winter in the Northeast is not my favorite season winter what is she we don't know her I grew up not even owning a coat girl <laughs> and so when I think about what has gotten me through the coldest part of the year here in the Northeast it is this list of items I'm going to share with y'all that span multiple categories we got some fashion we got some home goods etc okay and so I want to chat with you about what is on that list we have about 10 or so items just in case you were also interested in knowing what kind of just brightens my day and maybe it'll brighten your day up too a little bit girl it is a very gloomy day actually in the DC Metro so with that said if you are down for some style and self-care inspiration with a little bit of a social justice twist thrown in there then girl you've made it to the right place thank you make sure you subscribe to my channel you or follow me over on Instagram that's really where the tribe hangs out day to day so you're gonna want to be on that on, on that Instagram okay so follow me over on Instagram and just keep watching And before I get started, let me share with y'all what I'm wearing today. I'm wearing my new Chanel clip-on earrings. I shared these with y'all actually um, in my New York Fashion Week vlog. I told you all that they came from what goes around comes around. They were having a little bit of a Valentine's Day sale. And they are my first pair of Chanel earrings. I have been obsessed with Chanel vintage earrings for a very long time. And so I'm so excited that I have these. Y'all know. I don't really go for the small earrings very often, but I feel like these are doing what needs to be done, especially when they are paired with a chunky necklace like this gold one from Dior. Okay, my dress is from Jocelyn. It's a great Australian brand. Those are my homies over there. We gang gang. And they gifted me this dress. It is a baby doll style dress, kind of trapeze slash baby doll style, okay? Uh, it's a little shorter in the front, longer in the back. Looks great with a pair of knee boots this time of year. And it has buttons going all the way down the front. Uh, I am wearing on my wrist my free Maiden Amani bracelet. I know it is sold out, y'all. She had a bit of... Um, a drop a limited drop not too long ago um and hopefully you caught it if you didn't then just dm free maiden and say sis i need the bracelet and try to convince her to put some more in rotation now somebody said that the jingle jangle of my bracelet was getting on their nerves in the video and you know what it's black history month okay and 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 i choose to adorn myself in pieces like this that are cultural and authentic so if that's gonna bother you sis then i i don't know what to tell you because i'm 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 a little my my best black woman adorned life over here okay so <laughs> with that said let's get started with the winter favorites all right so i went and grabbed my coffee y'all because the first thing on the list is my espresso machine and let me just say that I had never even really thought about an espresso machine until I started watching a lot of Monroe Steele's content. And Monroe goes on and on about her Nespresso machine. So I'm like, you know what, let me just try to get into better coffee. The first thing I did was I got a coffee maker over quarantine that also had a, um, a milk frother attached to it and made individual cups of coffee. Delicious. But I felt like I was wasting coffee and also I didn't know what kind of coffee to get that really was going to kind of be the flavor component that was like bam what I needed to wake up in the morning and live my best life go on about my business mind the business that of course pays me literally uh and so uh i decided you know let me just my girl always oh, said what is let me just try it right so i told my mama that was what I wanted for Christmas. She got me an espresso machine and because mama a real one, she also got me the electric milk warmer and frother to go along with it. Talk about luxury, girl. And luxury comes in all forms. The air we breathe, the, the oil that we put on our bodies, okay? What we drink, how we, what, what we eat, what, what we watch on our devices. All of those things can be a manifestation of luxury because luxury literally means, in my opinion, I get this from Lisa Nichols, the motivational speaker. It literally means privileged circumstances. And it is a privilege indeed to wake up, girl, and, 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 and pour my little coffee creamer 
in my uh, milk warmer slash frother and then to put my coffee pod in that Nespresso machine girl it just take a little touch a little flick of the wrist do you see just a little flick uh, and then you put that pod in there honey now here's what I know uh, the girls go crazy for different types of like combinations and recipes I'm sorry I don't have any of those to give you my recipe is very simple I use my so delicious creamer I kind of go between one to two all uh, oat milk or coconut milk based uh, very low sugar I don't like to do a lot of processed sugar y'all uh, and then I heat that up I froth it and I pour that in first and then I uh, go ahead and I brew my Nespresso coffee the pots that I like the most if I want a flavor coffee are the caramel cookie and the um, vanilla custard and if I don't want a flavored coffee then what I'll do is the Malazio I think is how you pronounce it I'll put all my three favorite flavors on the screen y'all I've been keeping it simple as far as that is concerned but if you have a bomb recipe let the girls know down below let us know let us know let us know okay uh, but if you are a coffee drinker and you tired of giving Starbucks your money then I think a Nespresso is a great investment it has truly truly been one of my winter favorites so cheers y'all next up has been a true winter staple and that is my turtlenecks from aqua they're the aqua brand but i got them from bloomies which is a concept store by bloomingdale so y'all know i already shared with you all in my how to stay stylish during winter video if you have not watched that you want to watch that next for sure y'all uh this bright pink one I'm sorry, you can't see this in my lap, girl. I'm just... It just feels like someone wrapped you in a blanket, okay? And the color, I think, is so unexpected for this time of year that it has just instantly lifted my mood every time I have put it on. And so I love this one so much until I went back to Bloomies and grabbed the second one when I knew that I wanted something to wear under my Jockman's dress for New York Fashion Week. And that is this, I think they call the color Mulberry, but it's kind of like a burgundy with little flicks of blue in it. Now my sizing for these y'all is all over the map. I got the pink in a medium, but only because I felt like the small was tight in the arms and I got the burgundy in an extra small because they didn't have a small and I was in a rush trying to prepare for New York Fashion Week y'all. I would say my ideal size in these is a small and that is only because I actually like for a turtleneck like this to fit more slim but for you if you do want it to be a little baggier then get your true size if not go down a size. They do have a fair amount of stretch in them so it's going to fit uh, no matter what size you get or it's going to fit even if you go down two sizes. Let me let me put it like that uh, because I would never buy an extra small and much of anything and I could still make this work. The only difference is that it was just shorter. So the sleeves came up to like a little high work. Uh, but you couldn't tell because I wore it with the underneath the dress and that's also a pro tip y'all if you want to get something like this to layer just naturally you're going to have to go down a size or in my case two. Nevertheless uh, I love cashmere. I am a fabric snob unapologetically I'll, I'll take a cashmere blend it don't have to be full cashmere okay uh but i just love the way that it feels on my skin i love the warmth that it provides and i feel like it can be very difficult to find cashmere that is more on the affordable side and that is good quality and that's why i bang so hard with the aqua line and so these have been surely my favorite sweaters this winter next up is my norma kamali puffer coat now I have joked before and said that sis needs her own Instagram account. Kind of like the activist Duray McKesson and that blue puffer vest that he wore for years. Is, is Duray still wearing that, that daggone Patagonia blue vest? Uh, uh, anyway, somebody created a Twitter account for the vest. The vest is definitely very much, uh, it, it precedes DeRay at times as far as what we know him for. It is the blue vest. And that's what I feel like is happening with the Norma Kamali puffer coat. Somebody gonna start this an Instagram account. This needs to, uh, needs to I'll be all over black Twitter, okay? Because she's that girl. 
actually wore this to the the coldest winter ever the New York ball that I just went to uh, last weekend and although I had on a very kind of more dressy evening outfit underneath I didn't feel like I was completely toning it down by wearing that coat which is hard to do with a puffer coat right I think what Norma Kamali got right with that coat y'all is that she has created a silhouette that feels sophisticated in a coat that is otherwise casual which can be very very hard to do I think she hit it out the park with the collar, how the collar can be popped. I think she hit it out the park with the sash and the lack of a zipper or a button because a wrap coat always feels a little bit more stylish than, let's say, a, a North Face with a zipper down the front, which I also have. Um, I think the length is out of this world at almost six feet tall. It comes down to my ankles, which is so hard for me to find. I mean, Again, sis is just that girl. And that is the first coat, y'all, that I have ever gotten that I felt like I have outerwear that is doing the thing. Like, I have outerwear that understands the assignment because that has been the hardest thing for me to wrap my head around in the decade that I have been in a colder climate in the, uh, in the DC Metro, as I mentioned, is finding outerwear that is as stylish as what I'm wearing inside of <laughs> the outerwear um and I think on days when it's really cold because trust me it is warm that Norma Kamali coat is it um now I don't know if the black and white like herringbone print is still available recently when I searched I found it in all black and I also found a shorter version in this herringbone. Whatever I can find, I will link. I will also link some more affordable versions because this is an investment. Now, I got this coat in a partnership with Amazon during Black History Month last year. So it is a gifted piece. But it's something that, hands down, I would buy over and over and over again oh and it's machine washable girl so with the high collar sometimes i get a bit of makeup on it girl throw that thing in the wash on gentle cycle hang it up to dry and have not had any issues with the filling or with the pattern the print or any of that so she has been a staple this winter and i'm sure for winters to come next up is a fragrance and it is Givenchy's late enter d Probably not pronouncing that correctly, y'all. Uh, but it is a fragrance that was recommended by Brittany of Pockets and Bows. If you all are not following Sis and most importantly watching her fragrance videos, then you are missing out. I have come to the conclusion I don't need to buy one fragrance unless I consult the fragrance aficionado that is Miss Brittany of, of the platform Pockets and Bows before I do so, okay? And so I have been in the market for a fragrance. It's been over a year since I actually bought a fragrance. Um, I have some that were gifted to me, but as far as me going out and looking for a fragrance, it's been quite some time. And so I watched a video from her and I wanted to check out a few of what she recommended, a few fragrances that she recommended in the video. And when I found this one at Nordstrom I said okay well this is it this is the one uh it is just so good for this time of year now I'll be honest I probably um for me this screams fall and winter so I probably will not keep this through out the spring as far as my everyday fragrance is concerned but let me just tell y'all what the scent notes are girl because I had to look it up I wanted to sound somewhat <laughs> somewhat informed in this video but it's the description for me it says uh, with a forbidden blend of white flowers and a dark accord La Inter D is a resolutely underground flower okay come on underground it unveils a sensual bouquet of orange blossom jasmine and tuberose now I love all of these fragrances uh, separately so that's good to know in contrast Earthy dark tones emanate okay, verb, from vetiver and patchouli to create a daringly addictive and sensual fragrance. Girl, don't that make you just want to <laughs> buy out the mall? Girl, give them all to me. That thing is a daringly addictive and sensual fragrance. I, I could not describe it anymore. I am such a fan of patchouli, of jasmine, orange blossom, vetiver. I mean, all of those notes are great fragrances on their own. And then to put them together in this blend, I mean, sensual is the only way to describe it. Um, maybe not so sensual because Henri hates it, but... Oh, well... 
it's my fragrance and I'm gonna do what I want to uh, and I would definitely definitely recommend this uh, it is at the top of my winter favorites list and again for the first time that I went into a store specifically looking for a great new scent and to happen upon this one I think I did a good job thank you Brittany I appreciate you sis now, fragrances are having their moment with content creators. And so if you have been watching any of the girls talk about fragrances lately, I'm sure what you have heard mentioned also is MFK or Maison Francis Kirk Dijon. Uh, the Baccarat Rouge, okay? It is the fragrance of all fragrances. When you put it on, you smell like money, honey, okay? And I don't have the fragrance, but I have something that I love just as much, and that is the candle. I actually have burned this down, girl to nothing and when I do that I put it on my candle warmer so that I can allow for the rest of the candle the smell to emanate so that I'm not wasting the candle even when the wick gets very short so pro tip there all right I just have a little candle warmer from Amazon but girl when I tell you it smells just like the perfume which I feel like can be very hard to do in a candle this for me is it it really smells like somebody came into my office and, and sprayed a bunch of baccarat rouge and just kind of left it <laughs> in different places throughout the office that's just how strong the scent throw is and again i'm not always impressed by the candles that are intended to go along with the old old day perfumes i think that's how you pronounce it right um I'm not always impressed with the fragrances that go, the candles that go along with the fragrance because I just kind of feel like it can be hard to replicate when you add wax to it. But the burn is very even, y'all. Um, again, I've gotten down to the bottom and I put it on my candle warmer and I can still smell it just as strongly as I did when I was burning the wick. I'm just, I'm impressed. It is a very pricey candle, but for me, aromatherapy and fragrance and scents are just such an important part of my day until I think it was worth the cost, especially of when I think about how slow it burned. I mean, I've had this candle since I think the beginning of January. Yeah, it was definitely before MLK weekend. I think it was the beginning of January. Um, and it is now almost the end of February as I am filming this. And so, and I burned it just about every day, if not every other day. And again, the last little bit of it, I'm still squeezing out with the candle warmer. So for it to have lasted as long as it did, for the smell to be as strong as it is, I think it was worth the investment. And if you are looking for a luxury candle or something special to treat yourself with, this I think is a good one. Now, Baccarat Rouge comes in like different iterations. I don't know if the candle does as well, but this is definitely the 540 fragrance and I will put it at the top of my winter favorites list. Now let's talk about a book, y'all. Uh, you probably don't know this, but I am a big reader. I'm always reading something. Typically, I try to go from a nonfiction to a fiction. I rotate back and forth every month or so. Uh, in undergrad, I studied English literature. I had gotten some advice that it would prepare me for law school, which it did. And after I got over the PTSD of law school, uh, I was able to go back to reading for pleasure. And I have spent probably the last five or so years just digging myself like back into my love of books. And so for the winter, the favorite book that I have read, probably one of my favorites of quite some time, has been The Death of Vivek Oji by Akwaiki and Maisie. I don't care if you haven't read a book since The Cat in the Hat. This right here is what you're going to want to put on your list. More importantly, just to know them as an author. Now, Akwaiki, my love for them and their sister is above and beyond. Um, many of us may know them both from their presence on social media, especially their sister. And uh, she is a very prolific photographer, has been uh, published everywhere from the New York Times to the LA Times, to every, everywhere, everywhere. And as one would have it, her um, just excelling in the game of photography is the same to which Akweke has excelled in 
fiction and in, in, in writing novels and it is just really mind blowing. I don't know what the DNA is, but they family got the juice over there, okay? Um, because the character development alone in this book really was mind blowing. Like, I love books where you grow with the character, right? Like everything that you know to be true about the character does not hit you in the face at the beginning of the novel. It's kind of gradual process of understanding who Vivek is, understanding the the culture around him. It's set in Nigeria where um, Akweke grew up, uh, and and it is just this kind of cultural masterpiece, honestly that also gives you a eye into the LGBTQ experience. And I'm not gonna tell you too much about it because I'm not gonna spoil it because that kind of sneaks up on you. Uh, but it is an undercurrent to the novel, which is very, very important. And it kind of, again, a quick is, is gradually taking you along the development of these characters. And um, at times it makes you very uncomfortable at times you smile, you giggle, and at times you are boohoo crying. Every emotion. Uh, and as it relates to what is considered like in the canon, the international and the US literal, like literary canon, what's in the canon, too often we do not hear from trans authors like Akweke. We don't hear from black people enough. We definitely do not hear from um, people who are giving voices from the continent of Africa. And I fell in love with literature that was set in Africa when I first read Things Fall Apart when I was in the ninth to the 10th grade. So all that to say girl because you didn't come to Tashara's TED Talk. <laughs> If you are looking for a great book to read, go ahead and pick up uh, The Death of Vivek OG, my new favorite author for sure. Next up, let's talk about betting. Uh, whenever I talk about bedding, I instantly think of my grandmother who growing up was so into her bedspread, her linens, I have turned into her. And as part of my 40 for 40 list, y'all, I really wanted to invest in great sheets and do so intentionally. I'm that person that will kind of hop over to a Marshalls or Ross and kind of grab whatever tends to be mid-range, not the most expensive but not the cheapest, and just kind of make it do what it do, right? But for the first time, I was intentional about great sheets. And when I tell you my sleep has been so much better, I invested in the Casa Luna line, their linen sheets from Target. And I had been looking at sheets from Parachute and other brands, um, thinking that that's the route I was going to go. But one day I was just in Target and like we all do, buying stuff that was not actually the reason why I went into Target. And I wandered down the linen aisle and I was like, well, let me get some more sheets. And when I saw the Casa Luna ones and I saw that they were linen and I'd never seen like non-cotton sheets before and I said, let me just try them. They were $150, so definitely the most I've ever spent on linen, y'all. I'm, I'm sorry, it just is. Because we know that sheets can go up to thousands of dollars depending on the type. But that was a big splurge for me. And got them home, washed them, threw them on the bed. And they have been absolutely phenomenal. Now, here's the thing. I shared with you all before in my Lily Silk video, or my video that was in partnership with Lily Silk, um, that I am in menopause because of the medication I take post breast cancer. And that means that I suffer from hot flashes and more specifically night sweats. And I have to be comfortable at night and be wearing pajamas that are breathable. But I also didn't realize how much sheets actually also contribute to um, my body kind of being overheated at night or my inability to get comfortable. And so as soon as I put these sheets on the bed, it was like, hallelujah. I just, it's like, what have I been doing with my life? And you would think that linen sheets would be um, kind of scratchy to the touch, but they're not. They're soft. Now you do kind of feel some of the more fibrous texture than you would in like a cotton sheet, um, but uh, they are still soft to the touch. I am so excited to like get in bed at night and kind of snuggle up underneath them. It has just been a great addition to my life, especially this winter when you want to be warm, but you want to be shrouded 
within a breathable fabric and I'm so happy that I found them at Target so they wash well will definitely not, not be my last set of Casa Luna sheets next up y'all let's talk about Natia and Laco y'all remember these I shared these earrings with you which I almost put on today and I was like shy have some self-respect you have more jewelry than these earrings um, but I shared these with you all in the video that I did in partnership with Farfetch. It was a weekend vlog. If you are not watching my vlogs, make sure you do so because I have started to do kind of um, brand integrations or spotlights in my vlogs. Uh, so these were first featured there and I absolutely adore them y'all I'm a fan of an oversized earring I'm a fan of like a coin earring I'm a fan of a hoop and this gives me all of those things in one they are gold covered brass I've had them now for about a month they have held up well for me to be wearing them multiple times a week I'm not seeing any fading or any spots where the color has rubbed off and they're going to stay in rotation girl and what I love about Natia and Laco is all of the designs are just so cool and they really specialize in oversized chunky statement jewelry which is just my thing hands down and for me y'all because I do wear so much brass jewelry um, this is gold covered brass as well I know that it can come at a higher price point than let's say kind of your fast fashion jewelry and so these were about $200 or so but I noticed that Farfetch does have quite a few of their pieces on sale from time to time and so or what you can do if you have not done so already is use my 10% off code from Farfetch which I'll make sure I have a link down below to save you a little bit of you know dollar a little, little coin a little coinage on these okay um, if you're interested in these or something else from Farfetch of course but probably my new favorite jewelry brand for sure i use these earrings to dress things up all the time um i was wearing over the weekend a black turtleneck black dress pants air jordans and i threw these earrings on to kind of get a girls a look and i feel like the assignment was understood so natia and laco has been one of my jewelry treasures this winter and the last thing is a new lip color from Sephora. This is their glossed brand and the color is called Regal. Now for some reason my lip color never comes across on camera as bright as it is in real life when I use this camera. I think it's the lens. But just know that it is kind of a purple sparkly hue which is not something that I would typically go for. But again what I know is that I need brighter colors and something to kind of just really get me excited this time of year because the cold weather, the lack of sunlight really can get to me. And so when I picked this up from Sephora, I said, well, let me just see what it gives. It was pretty inexpensive, although I do love a lot of Sephora's lip colors, y'all. But it was pretty inexpensive, so I said, oh, you know, if, if it doesn't work, I haven't lost much. And lo and behold, girl, I loved it. I put it on with a brown liner. Of course, I'm wearing it today. Um, it could also look really, really nice with like a deep purple liner. I think that color from MAC is called Night Moth or something like that. We'll probably eat this up as well. Uh, and it is just something that I love to wear when I'm wearing all black like I am today because I feel like it gives you a pop without being too bright, y'all. Uh, and I'm going to be looking for more of this kind of like metallic, these metallic shades from Sephora. This may have been $12, $13, I think, y'all. Um, it is long lasting. I love to wear it when I'm on camera for my Zoom calls. I don't always like to wear a gloss when I leave the house because obviously we're wearing a mask but when I'm in here girl on camera this is the lip that I definitely go for and it has been one of my favorites all winter and that is it good people thank you so much for rocking with me for my winter favorites video let me know down below do you have any of these items have you been thinking about them have you read the book that I mentioned I would love to know in the meantime give the video a big thumbs up subscribe to my channel follow me over on Instagram and I will see you good people across the internet peace